Hello everyone and welcome to the AMOS project, our course on Agile methods and open source. In an AMOS project, student teams develop open source software based on requirements from an industry partner. So this is as realistic a project at a university as you can make it. My name is Dirk Riele, I'm a professor at the University of Erlangen and I'm teaching this course. Our goal here with the AMOS project is to teach students process and engineering practices of Agile methods, Scrum and extreme programming. At the same time, I personally believe that there is no good teaching of theory without practical experience. So everything students learn or hear about will immediately put to good use in the development of useful open source software useful to a company, an industry partner, an organization which provides the requirements and interacts with the student team over the course of the three-month project. The goals here again are practical uh, concepts from agile methods, from software project management, from open source tooling, as well as learning for the students to work with an external stakeholder. Software engineering is often defined as programming in the large. And here, sometimes for the first time, students really learn what it means to communicate and coordinate work in a non-trivial team. Again, these are large teams, uh, at least six up to nine people. And of course, we have practical goals. We want to see useful software. I believe that doing something that has a recognizable value for some industry partner, for someone else, maybe for the students themselves, beyond being a project at a university, that this motivates, that this makes people want to do good work. And so I'm looking forward to the final day of the course, the demo day, where student teams, where the student teams will show their work by demoing it to the public. We're pretty practical. I take pride and I put a lot of effort into finding industry partners who want to meet our students, who want to uh, provide the requirements for good, useful open source software. I've been doing this for more than 10 years now. We've had more than 100 open source projects, uh, mostly on GitHub, some on, some on GitLab and some older ones elsewhere. And so we have a lot of experience of guiding student teams to hopefully deliver useful software. At the same time, the presence of industry makes this course attractive to students. You are usually oversubscribed and have to, um, can only take a subset of the students. And part of that is probably or most certainly that industry also wants to meet our students beyond the project content and uh, know what's going on at the university. Here's some pictures, photos from past projects. Um, teams were a little bit smaller there. Um, you can see the interaction in person um, with the industry partner here or the demo day. Most of the photos here are from the demo day in person. Today, the Amos project is distributed across multiple universities. And so it's distributed Scrum and the course takes place online both the team meetings of the students as well as the demo day. It's all virtual now. So if you're a student and you are looking at this course and are wondering whether it's for you, uh, hopefully you watch this video even before the first day of class, then you need to understand that uh, this is not a simple course. You need to work hard. You need to be willing to learn learn what's needed for the project. We, the university, I teach you agile method skills. These are the process skills, but the projects are all over the place. Um, there may be different technologies needed that we will not teach you, but that you need to pick up because that's the right technology for the project, learning a particular library. We do make sure that the Programming languages and fundamental technologies are usually well known to students, but sometimes an industry partner has special requirements that go beyond 
Java and JavaScript or Python and so forth. So you need to be willing as a student to learn new libraries, new, new technologies that you might not know. You select it. If this is first day of class for you, you already selected your projects based on that as we make the project descriptions available in advance of the first class day. Within the team, then you will play a particular role. The student will play a particular role according to how Scrum wants you to develop software. So we have three classic roles of a product owner who needs to understand and formulate requirements in the form of a product backlog, a software developer or a team of software developers who turn those requirements into working software, so they are engineers, and a scrum master who watches over process improvement, removing both impediments to process and finding ways of making the team more effective. You can find the overall organization of this course at amos.uni1.de. This is the main index page with all the relevant information. If you don't know where to go, go there. Amos fits into our curriculum quite nicely. It's an advanced course. It's a master level course for the second or third semester before you do your master thesis and it aligns well with coach or Amos Scrum Master, which is about teaching the Scrum Master role, which is kept slightly outside the Amos class itself that you're in right now. This one is where we teach product owners and Scrum Masters, and product owners and software developers. So you can see how these roles have certain requirements. You all need to be present in the Product owners and software developers need to be present in the lecture, like right now, and you absolutely have to participate in the weekly team meetings. There's no excuse here. The team meetings are the main place of coordination, and if you miss them, you miss out on the course, and every participation is graded, so you really should not miss the team meetings. The coach students, the Scrum Master students have a separate uh, session and um, that's uh, the day before class day for Amos. Those students who take the Scrum Master role previously took Amos, so they are coming back for a second time and they already know Amos itself. Right now we teach at three universities, University of Erlangen, TU Berlin and FU Berlin, and I hope there will be more in the future. So how do we grade? Students, understandably, always want to know how they will be graded. Well, the product owner and the software developer as the two core roles in the AMOS module here, they are graded on understanding of the theory, the lectures, as well as the practice, the project itself. The project obviously dominates in terms of percentages. Theory uh, understanding will be measured by class quizzes, which are fairly simple. So these are easy points to get, arguably, and take place about the, every week in the first half of the semester. The practice is more challenging and will also perhaps the real learning takes place because, as I explained, without applying what you just heard, you are not actually learning it. So theory is put into practice in the project right away. It's all aligned in such a way that you hear something in a lecture and it immediately becomes a homework requirement as part of the Scrum delivery rhythm. So the practice is uh, split into two parts your individual contribution to teamwork. Individual contribution to teamwork means it's your own work, it's your individual work um, that we measure in how it helps the team improve. And that's mostly done in the team meetings, which again are held weekly. And then outside the team meetings, there's the self-organized independent work that you also perform as you solicit or elicit requirements as a product owner or develop features as a software developer, mostly. The Scrum Master, as I explained, is participating in the project, but its lecture is the day before the Amos day. It's a separate lecture 
and um, which is also officially then a separate module. And um, the grading is explained in that course. You both need to participate in some class sessions. They are mandatory and you should really be participating in all. Participation is mandor mandatory for the first day of class. If you're not there, you're not getting into the course. And it's mandatory for weeks five, four and seven when we review the progress of your work. That, that may not sound very agile, but we need to make sure that you're actually working. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, it's easy to hide in a team. This doesn't work. An Amos project only works if everyone's engaged. You cannot slack off. You should not slack off. If you do, it will certainly show in your grade. We're taking detailed notes. So you need to be thoroughly, actively engaged. And then, of course, you need to be present to the final day of class, the Amos Demo Day. This video is um, only a fill-in if you don't participate in class, uh, in the regular classes. What is said in class precedes, is more important what's on the slides, what's more important than a video. So there's no excuse if you tell me something's in the video, but I said something different in class, class rules. The video or the slides, if they are slightly out of date, that's not an excuse not to come into class. All right, grading, class quizzes. So each class session where we had a, um, where we had a, a lecture the week before on, the, on Agile theory, each class session, the next class uh, then starts with a quiz where we test your understanding of the last session's topic. It's five questions, the quiz lasts for 10 minutes, it's graded, very simple. This is not a hard quiz, but it does make sure that you're actually paying attention to class, that you are attending class, and um, uh, that's it. This all happens automatically. You need to be there exactly when class opens, because the class quizzes open automatically. There is no way of making up for a missed class quiz. If the class quiz happened, we are not going to create an extra quiz just because you didn't show up. The class quizzes are available <clears throat> by registering for the Amos course at mu.uni1.de. So because this is distributed across multiple universities, we have to use a separate, a separate course management system. As explained, the most important contribution to your grade is what you do in the project. We spell it out in very much in fine grained detail. Your project work is graded by what you deliver on a week by week basis. The details of this can be found in the homework document linked to from the schedule of the amos.uni1.de document. So there are regular deliverables every week, a product backlog, a groomed product backlog with new requirements is due, uh, code contributions, continued demonstrated progress is due, etc. Every week in Scrum terminology is every sprint. So if you know Scrum, I can already look ahead and tell you the sprint duration in the Amos project is one week. Every week there has to be a sprint deliverable. Then there are irregular deliverables and they depend on where we are. So a build video, a demo video, um, a team contract is perhaps the earliest deliverable where you agree on how you want to proceed with your work. All of these things are individually due. Your Scrum Master knows all of them. So they can help you within your team meetings if you have any questions or in your side channels of communication. I recommend you set up your own communication channel to discuss your work. You'll obviously do that. We grade based on what you deliver, what you submit, 
and we are also present in team meetings to look at team dynamics and so forth. We are present in the class day on class day, so in the team meetings on days 3, 5, 7, 10, and 13. Team meetings are the meetings where the student team meets and they are on the same day as the lecture. We have really worked this in, through in fine detail. The links here, the capabilities timeline and the capabilities timeline explanation spell out in detail what you should be doing based on what we had in the lectures. It's separate from the homework document. The homework document is what you focus on on delivering. But if you want to understand the logic, you can also look at the capabilities timeline, what practices you should have learned and should be practicing. And this is exp expresses itself in how you deliver and what you deliver properly as homework. So software development is highly collaborative, remember? Software engineering is a communication and coordination activity. Still, we grade you individually. However, some of you may want to do pair programming. If you, if you decide to jointly work on something, that's okay. Then you have to declare that properly in your code commits specifically. So pair programming for software developers expresses itself by one of the two people making a commit. And in the next slide deck after this, we explain to you how you properly market that you work jointly on something. If it's not marked, then we don't know. And then one of the people will not get their points. So teamwork has its challenges. We really need to make sure that you get up to speed. One problem is if some people possibly slack off. That's human. The problem with people slacking off is that it can affect other people in the team. If you're working hard, but someone else is not, it will require even more dedication to not let yourself be affected by someone else slacking off. Now I can tell you, your grade is not affected by someone else slacking off. Um, but you may feel yourself being pulled down by someone else not doing their job. And if you're less motivated, you'll actually do less good work. So you should all hold each other to the highest levels of expectations and not accept slacking. What we do is we will try to discover this if this happens, if slacking off happens, we will try to discover this early on so that we can help you overcome it. Because if it continues, it will have significant problems for your team. So what we do is, and this is new with winter semester 2023 20, and 24, is to have two review processes, formal review processes built into the project in addition to the final demo day. The first one is where you have to demonstrate that your software builds. So you have to show how you clone your project from GitHub, how there's a defined build script from the command line that you can run. If you haven't set that up, something's amiss. If someone in your team can't show how to do it, they're obviously not participating. So something's also amiss then. You should work on your requirements, on implementing stuff, but also on your project setup in the first few weeks so that you are able to perform and show the rest of the class how your software builds. It's simple. We are not going to review the software. We just want to see you have a process in place and everyone in the team can show that they are actively participating by showing us that they can at least build the software. Then there's a second review in the middle of the project where we look, we ask you to demo your work in front of everyone. So in the middle of the project, in the mid project review, as part of the mid project release, there is minimal functionality only available. So we're not expecting uh, the world. But we do expect that there is some working software at this stage. And the reason here is that you need 
some teams in the past needed to be reminded that the industry partners aren't there for fun. They hope to get something out of it. An industry partner is people from a company usually who are here on company time, so it costs the company money. And they want to see something for it, which is an open source project. I convinced them to um, uh, sponsor an open source project here. But for that, um, there needs to be some output. So if you are not showing anything will come out of it, you will lose your industry partner. If, you, if they decide that's not going anywhere and drop out, then you don't have an industry partner. If you have no industry partner, you lose most of your motivation. Uh, the project won't be cancelled, you can keep going to the end, but how much fun is that? And how good will your grades be if uh, you don't get any reasonable requirements anymore? You do not want to lose your industry partner. So you should be able to demonstrate uh, some functionality by the middle of the project that hopefully is impressive to everyone watching. So once more, because students always ask, we grade your individual performance, not the team. We don't apply the team performance to your individual performance. But again, a great team where everyone's engaged leads to, leads to folks motivating each other. If you're motivated, if you're seeing how well others are doing, it motivates you to push harder and it will increase your productivity and your learning and you're getting more out of it. If there are people who are not participating, you shouldn't cover for them because they are basically dragging the team down. You can decide uh, to let them swim with you, but I can tell you from 100 projects of experience that it will make the output less valuable. It's the Scrum Master's job to help identify this and find uh, solutions to the problem, find places for those who can't quite contribute. We hope, of course, that the teams consist of students very much capable of performing the projects they uh, chose. One thing we've always wanted to do and taking a first step to now is to view the multiple parallel running Amos projects as projects in some sort of consultancy, as if this course was a consulting firm, a project consulting firm. So we never really figured out in the past how to create that larger software house, project house, because, and so as a consequence, each project was an individual project. So we decided to simply jump in this time and there is an Amos project channel on Slack where you can uh, sign up and ask questions. And asking questions about how to do this or that to others, that's part of the idea. You're helping each other across the project teams. Um, that does not make you look bad. In my opinion, it makes you look smart because you know how to ask questions, hopefully good questions. And again, there's nothing that badly reflects on you. It only reflects well on you. And those who give quality answers, we take note of that and we'll consider this when uh, grading, if there's a grade is at some boundary or so, and we see how that person helped others with smart answers. Uh, then that will be counted as a bonus. You need to register for your course and your university systems differ. You should know which one. And um, the actual management of ultimately who got into a project team is done by us. We have to do this by hand because again, we teach across multiple universities. You need to understand that Getting into the course is separate from exam registration. You can still drop out after a while. Of course, we hope you don't, but you can drop out. Sometimes students also forget to register for the exam. Obviously, you shouldn't, because if you don't register for the exam, I cannot give you a grade at the end. And um, 
trying to get into a course after it has run uh, often is rejected by the Prüfungsamt, the examination office. So make sure that once you are in the course, once you find yourself in a project team, you hear that from us, that then you also register for the specific exam at your university so that we can enter a grade after the course concluded. As explained, um, register through your registration system. Watch out if your university split the course into two halves, the lecture and the exercise. It's one course, one module consisting of a lecture and an exercise. Make sure you register for both if there are two present and then we can enter a complete grade for you. The beauty of this course, of this practical course, is that there is no big bang high stakes exam at the end. There's no oral examination. You just have to do the project work. And after three months, after the last week of the teaching time of the semester, you'll be done. And you can actually focus on all the other written exams. So. Um, we expect you and require you to work hard on this course, but once the demo day happened, you showed your work, there's only minimal work left, a project retrospective, so basically you're ready and you finished the course. And the way you get a grade again is step by step work every week, not one high stakes exam where you might be lucky or not. The key to success in Amos is regular, steady, weekly work with weekly deliverables based on what we spell out for you in our documents. I'm teaching English. As you can see, some projects may have a German language requirement because the industry partner required it, um, but the student team among themselves can speak English or German. Um, but if it was a project partner requirement, then you can all usually, at least by your own declaration, speak German as well. Once more, amos.uni1.de, uni1.de, that's the core jump table, index document, everything's reachable for there, including some tabs in that document right away. So the work rhythm is class day is today or whenever um, you hear me say this in person, um, usually Wednesdays, these days, 10.15 to 11.45. And then team meetings on that same day after lunch, after the class at 12.30 to 2 p.m. It's the next slot after the lecture and the team meetings of the different projects all run in parallel. This is how it should be visible in your degree program schedules and this is where we require presence. If you have conflicting appointments, conflicting times, conflicting courses, then you have to make a decision which one you want to take. We cannot accept that you do not participate in team meetings. Please take this serious. The project work is self-organized. The deliverables are due according to schedule. There are meetings that you should have, but we are not telling you when. Meetings you should have are with the industry partner and you need to figure out when you can meet your industry partner and also the product owners, but this is looking ahead to how Scrum is being performed. The product owners often want to talk with a developer before the team meeting to make sure that the product backlog is in good shape and that the requirements aren't pure fantasy. We send you announcement through the email aliases or the course management system. You can ask us administrative questions if you don't want to ask them in the forum and um, uh, use the alias for that. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And after this, it's the introduction to team and tools, the basics of getting started in this first week in the team meeting after this lecture session.